There are many tools to use in AutoCAD. Before we can use them, we must know where they are or how to get to them. At first, you're going to need to hunt around a screen for all the tools that you're going to want to use. That's okay. In no time at all, you're going to learn where everything is. In fact, your muscles will remember exactly where they need to move, how far, what direction, etc. to get to the commands you use the most. The main form of input in AutoCAD is the mouse. When you move the mouse, you move the cursor around on the screen. A typical mouse can have two or three buttons, and some users will use as many as a five button mouse or more. It's up to you, but all you need is a standard two button mouse that also has a scroll wheel. The scroll wheel will act as a third button. Each button has a specific function. Button number one, which is the left click button, is your main form of input. You click this button to select objects. So you can see we have two lines here, and when I move the mouse, the cursor moves. As I move the cursor over an object, it's highlighted. That just lets you know where you're at. It's not doing anything, it just says, hey look, you're going to do something with this line. So if I left click now, I select that line. And on the right of my screen, you have the properties inspector. This gives you information about the object you've selected. It tells you it's a line, the layer, the color, etc. To unselect or deselect an object, press the escape key on your keyboard. The right click button can be set up to work in a couple of different ways. Out of the box, a right click will bring up a shortcut window. So if you right click on your mouse, now this right click shortcut window gives you access to your clipboard, to the isolate commands, undo, pan, zoom, and some other options. Your right click menu will change depending on the circumstances. And again, to get rid of that window, you can just press the escape key. So if I select this line and then right click, your right click will bring up options. And depending on what you're doing, it will bring up different options. They're all contextual, meaning they have to do with what it is you're doing at the time. Now, a lot of users will prefer to have the right click function as the enter key or the return key. That's for a lot of old time users like myself who have been doing this for a long time when that was the default setting. Now you can get to that and change that. I'll show you how. Now you'll still have access to your shortcut windows, which is good. That's why I like to use it because I get a little bit of both worlds here. If I right click, this window pops up and I get preferences. Now I can just left click on the preferences. Now these have a lot of different settings for AutoCAD for Mac for you. What you want to do is go to this general tab right here. You have cursor selection, units, look and feel, application, and document settings. And we're going to talk about most of these later on. Generally speaking, you're not going to change most of these, but in this case, we're going to. So if we go to the general, and right here is your mouse and trackpad customization. Now I want to select this button right here. This is the mode I prefer to work in, but you can do it if you want. You don't have to. For the rest of this training video, I'm going to have this turned on. And what this does is it enables quick secondary click as a return. So I'll show you. So I select that, I come down to the bottom, click OK. Before, I would just right click and it would bring up the window. When I do that now, it works as the enter key. Now the enter key, if you're not in a command, will restart the command you just did. And that's one of the big reasons why I want to keep this on. Now don't worry about those shortcuts, they're still there. You right click and hold until it pops up. So that's pretty handy. So I can get to both of these. I can get to a lot of tools very quickly, plus I can do things very quickly. I'll give you another example. If I type in the letter L for line, press enter. That starts the command. Press escape. L again. Instead of pressing return, right click on your mouse. That's like pressing the enter key. I do that because you need to press the enter key all the time. So it saves me a lot of time if I don't have to take my hand away from my mouse. You'll see more of this as we go along. As you can see, moving the mouse moves your crosshairs in the drawing. Now, if you use the scroll wheel, that will help you to move the drawing too. If you roll it back and forth, it zooms in and zooms out. So when I push the scroll wheel forward, it zooms in. When I roll it back towards me, it zooms out. Now you aren't shrinking or enlarging the drawing at all. You're just zooming in and out. It's a very handy tool. Now there was a time in AutoCAD when you couldn't zoom in real time like this, and it was horrible. Your scroll wheel will help you zoom in and out, and if you click and hold it, it will act like a pan. So now I can pan my screen around. This is really nice. I can 
zoom in, click and hold, release, and I just panned and zoomed all at the same time. You will see me panning around and zooming in and out all the time. That's a great thing. So you'll use those two functions together. If you double click on the scroll wheel, you will perform what is called a zoom extents. There, I double clicked it. I'm going to zoom out again. I want to pan over. And you see here, panning and it's not doing anything. That's a feature or a glitch inside AutoCAD. Sometimes it just can't handle it and it doesn't know where to go. If you type in REA or Regen All, press enter, now it will let you pan around again. It gets stuck. It's just one of those things that happens in AutoCAD and it's frustrating when it happens. If I zoom out and pan over here, you see all of my line work for this file here on my left. But if I double click on the scroll wheel, it performs a zoom extents. A zoom extents is that it will zoom your drawing all the way out so that you can see everything that is in your drawing. If I were to draw a circle over here, hit the letter C, enter, first point for your center point, second point for your radius. Now I have all of these objects. Pan over, zoom in, here's my circle. Now if I double click on the scroll wheel, it'll zoom extents. It zooms out just enough so that all of the line work can fit on your window. That's a zoom extents. So your scroll wheel does several things. It scrolls in and out, it pans, and it performs a zoom extents. Now that's pretty handy if you're zoomed in really close to something and you need to come all the way out, but you're not quite sure how far, just come all the way out. Double click, zoom extents. Your crosshairs are very important too. They're your target. Where your mouse goes, the crosshairs go. Where your crosshairs are is where your new lines, your new text, and other objects will be placed in your drawing. I prefer to have my crosshairs full screen, and I do that to use them sort of like a guideline when I draw. We don't necessarily have to change that. If you type in OP for options, or right click again and hold, because we made that change in the settings, go to preferences, go to cursor and selection, and you can see right here in the selection tool, you have crosshair lines length. That will give you a bit of a preview here. Right now they're set to 5%. That's 5% of your screen size. You can change that. As I drag it, I can make it 50%. You can see my crosshairs are much bigger. I know a lot of people that like to work this way. They don't want their crosshairs to be giant, but they want them to be really big, just not the full screen. I prefer them to be at 100%. Click OK. And now my crosshairs are all over. I use this as a guideline to eyeball things a lot of times, and I'm used to working this way. Feel free to set these however you want to. The crosshairs consist of three major items, the vertical line, the horizontal line, and the pick box. These three items are there for visual reference. The two lines are perfectly straight and they intersect at the pick point, your vertical and horizontal crosshairs. This point of intersection is the point where you will select objects or insert a new object. When you move your crosshairs off of the drawing area, the area right here, which is where you draw at, it turns into a pointy arrow so that you can pick on your different commands, on the different toolbars and ribbons and other palettes. The main drawing area in AutoCAD is this large field here. This drawing here has a little grid in it. We'll talk about the grid later on, and you can turn that off and on and resize it. This is where your drawing objects will go. And there are two main spaces that you'll draw in, model space and paper space. Model space is where your drawing objects go. Paper space is where your annotation and sheet objects go. We'll cover those two spaces in greater detail in another section. Now, if you need to go to help, Come right up here to the top and click on the help. You can go to AutoCAD help, look up some other items, or perform a search right here.